Hello everyone. Welcome back to Coding Hex channel. In the previous video, we talked about HTML5 interview questions. In this video, we are going to cover famous CSS3 interview questions. Let's start with question number one. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. CSS is a simple mechanism for adding style to HTML documents or any other web page. CSS handles the look and feel part of a web page. The next question is, what is new in CSS3? CSS3 extends CSS 2.2 and it is the latest upgrade of CSS language. It brings a lot of new features and additions. Some of these features include rounded corners on HTML elements, shadow on divs and text, gradient fills, animations, as well as new layouts such as multi-column layout, flexible block box or grid layouts. Other features are CSS3 selectors, pseudo classes, new color formats, new border radius property. Our next question is list out CSS3 modules. Below is list of most popular or important CSS3 modules. Selectors, box model, backgrounds and borders, text effects, 2D, 3D transformations, animations, multi-column layout, and user interface. Next question is, what is the CSS3 animation? When the animation is created in the add the rate keyframe, bind it to a selector, otherwise the animation will have no effect. Bind the animation to a selector by specifying at least these two CSS3 animation properties. Select the name or specify the name of the animation. Also specify the duration of the animation. Our next question is, what are the values that can be taken by property white space of CSS3? There are five values that can be taken by this property. It is normal, pre, no wrap, pre wrap, and pre line. Question number six is What are the possible values of position attributes? The pos possible values of the position attributes are absolute, fixed, inherit relative and static. How does absolute positioning work in CSS? In absolute positioning, the element is removed from the normal document flow and no space is created for the element in the page layout. It is positioned relative to its closest position at ancestor. Otherwise, it is placed relative to the initial containing block. Its final position is determined by the values of top, right, bottom and left. With this, our next question is, how does fixed positioning work on CSS? Fixed positioning is like absolute positioning with the exception that the elements containing block is the initial containing block established by the viewport. Unless any ancestor has transform, perspective or filter property set to something other than none, which then causes that ancestor to take place of the elements containing block. This can be used to create floating elements that stays in the same position regardless of scrolling. The next question is, how would you specify opacity in CSS3? 
Opacity can be specified using the newly added property called opacity that takes value between 0 and 1. The value 0 means that the element will be completely transparent and the value 1 means that the element will be completely opaque. This is the syntax of opacity. We have a div and given the opacity of 0 0.5 which is the value between 0 and 1. Internet Explorer however, however doesn't support this. So a filter has to be used as a polyfill. This is the syntax used in Internet Explorer. The next question is, what is word wrapping in CSS3? Wrapping is a vital property for proper display of contents in web pages. If wrapping is delayed, the user cannot display and view long lines that go outside the window boundary and thus become useless. How would you define a pseudo class in CSS3? And friends, let me tell you, it is very important question that are being asked in interviews. We can define pseudo class by listing the selector followed by a colon and finally the pseudo class element. Following is an example, div and having a pseudo class hover, given the color red. So whenever we are going to take our mouse on the div element, the color of the div going to change to red. Pseudo classes can be used to give elements special states. The most common example being anchor tag with hover class, which is used to change the color of a link when a mouse hovers over it. Other users include, sorry, other uses include using distinct styling for visited and unvisited links and styling an element differently when focused. The next question is, what are pseudo elements and what are they used for? Pseudo elements are used to style particular parts of an element rather than the whole thing. For example, you can use it to style the first line or first letter of a paragraph, text that you have selected, or you can use it to insert text or shapes before or after an element. They will start with a double colon, although a single colon is still allowed for backwards compatibility, and they look like this. So we have a P tag with a double colon and we are selecting the first line of P tag. Question number 13. What is the difference between width auto and width 100% and CSS? Width auto reaches to the full width and it will subtract borders, paddings, margins, etc. from the available space. Whereas width 100% will force the element to be as wide as its parent element and will add additional spacing which can cause some problems. The next question is, what are CSS3 transitions? CSS3 transitions allow you to change property values smoothly from one value to another over a given duration. This is the syntax of how we can use the CSS3 transitions in our web page. The next question is, what is CSS box model and what are its elements? The CSS box defines the design and layout of elements of CSS. The several elements are margin, border, padding, content. This is the example. We have a div and width, border, padding and margin of that div is specified.
the next question is what is the purpose of z index and how is it used the z index helps specify the stack order of positioned elements that may overlap one another the z index defaults value is 0 and can take on either a positive or a negative number an element with higher z index is always stacked above a lower index z index can take the following values auto number initial and inherit The next question is, in CSS3, how would you select every 8 tag element whose h reference attribute value begins with HTTPS? Every 8 tag element whose h reference attribute ends with .pdf and every 8 tag element whose h reference values contain the substring CSS. This is the syntax. We can select every A tag element whose H reference begins with HTTPS is like this. Write the A tag and to specify the attributes, use the H reference that the attributes you are specifying and this symbol which is equal to HTTPS. And whenever we want to specify or select any attributes whose value end with some string, it is used by using dollar symbol. And if we want to see if that attribute contains some specific substring, that can be selected by a string. The next question is what is RWD? RWD stands for Responsive Web Design. This technique is used to display the designed page perfectly on every screen size and device. For example, mobile, tablet, desktop and laptop. You don't need to create a different page for each device. The next question is explain universal selector in CSS. Universal selectors is used to match any element types. Below is the example. We are using a string and the color is defined. This rule is used to render the content of all elements in our document in white. The last question is, what is the use of float property in CSS? Float property is used to allow an HTML element to be positioned horizontally. Float property can take the value either left or right. This is an example. We are giving heading 1, 2 with the value float left. That's all in this video guys. Let me know how many questions were you familiar with in for the CSS3. Thank you for watching.